Hi, section 5.3, the definite integral. The lecture of this section will be saved into two uh, separate video clips. Before beginning the first part, let's recall Riemann sum. The Riemann sum is the sum of rectangle areas uh, associated with the partition of the interval AB and choice of a points CK uh, evaluation point so that the summation may change uh, if you cho choose different partition and different CK. However, uh, for any um, partition and for any choice of CK on each subinterval, this value, the summation, Riemann sum, is converging to a value when the partition is defined with uh, uh, the maximum interval length converges zero. So that is now here the background of this definition. F is a function on a closed interval, AB. We say that a number j is the defi definite integral of F over the interval, and we say that j is the limit of the Riemann sums. Okay, if uh, uh, this is uh, satisfied. Given any number epsilon positive, uh, that is a corresponding delta positive such that for every partition with a partition uh, subinterval maximum length bounded by delta and any choice of CK over subinterval, we have the Riemann sum and a number j, the number j, the difference is bounded by epsilon. That means that uh, for any choice of a partition, for any choice of a CK over subintervals, uh, as far as the partition is now, the length is converging to zero, then it is the value here, mm, the Riemann sums, the values are uh, converted to a value, then the value is called definite integral. In, in, in practice, we'll uh, use the notation integral uh, of fx over a to b uh, uh, dx. Mm. Once uh, definite integral exists, then we are using uh, this uh, notation to indicate uh, the limit of uh, Riemann sum. Okay, that is integral sign, and now this is a low bound of the interval, that is upper bound of integral. And fx is called the integrand, and x is the variable of integration. Okay, here, uh, when the definite integral exists, uh, we say that the Riemann sum of f on the interval converge to the definite integral. And rather than j, we'll use that notation. And in this case, we say f is integrable. Here, this theorem is saying the cases, the quality we have, uh, so that mm, mm, uh, the functions are integrable. If a function f is continuous over the closed interval, and or, so we have two cases, f is continuous, or, uh, although it is not continuous, it has at the most finite many jump discontinuities, then uh, definite integral exists. In the case we say f is integrable. So uh, it doesn't have to be uh, continuous. 
but discontinued, jump discontinued, continuities should be finite. Uh, now, in this example, we'll show one function which is not integrable. f of x is defined to be 1 if x is rational number, uh, the value is 0 when x is irrational number, and this function is not integrable over 0 to 1. In fact, it's not integrable over any uh, closed interval. Okay, we can prove here. Uh, we start with a partition of the interval. Then each subinterval, xk minus 1 to xk, and this subinterval, so let's visualize it. So start from 0 and 1, and we have partitions, a partition. Then xk is like this one. So for this subinterval, uh, that is, uh, in fact, xk minus 1, that is xk. And for each subinterval, we can find at least one uh, rational number and at least one irrational number. Always is possible. So that here, if you are choosing ck uh, from rational numbers, then now that is a sort of upper sum because the maximum value is 1. Upper sum approximation is along with uh, the choice for rational number, then the value is 1 so that now delta xk summation will be 1 because we are dealing with now interval from 0 to 1. So there is a upper sum. Now, already we know that, and for each subinterval, at least one irrational number, if you are choosing ck from irrational numbers, then the value, uh, function value will be 0, so that now mm, this whole summation will be 0. That is a lower sum. And here, although you refine in the uh, the partition, it doesn't matter for any uh, small subinterval. It doesn't matter. You can find always rational number, irrational number from each subinterval, so that this upper sum will be always one. This lower sum will be always zero, so that it is not converting to one number. Of course, for any other choices, the value will be between here zero and one. But anyway. The here, the thing is that, and this Lehman sum are not converging to one number, so it is not integrable. Making different choices for the point CK results in different limits for the corresponding Lehman sums, so that it is not integrable. For uh, the definition integral, we start with this notation along with the x. However, you can use t variable or u variable. So eventually, the variable is uh, dummy variable. OK. And when you uh, write down from this uh, summation, mm, mm, from this summation to get that integral, and uh, here, you have to use uh, a formula. Yeah, CK, the point, CK is point on each subinterval. So the CK is a point over the interval. And of course, this integral means that X is from A to B. So that CK will be changed into X and delta XK uh, will be, become DX. Here, in this example, we have to express the limit as a uh, definite integral. That means that in this form, we have to write the, uh, this limit. Now, partition is minus 7 to 5, so that the given term is same as integral 
lower bound is minus 7, and upper bound is 5. And then here, ck is changed into x, so that here x squared minus 3x, and delta xk will be changed into dx. That's the answer. Okay? So you have to recognize ck and uh, delta xk. Then you can get easily uh, here the definite integral. Okay? Uh, later on, we'll um, um, study how to get this value more uh, reasonably, easily. Okay. Now, to practice uh, the, for the expression of this definite integral, we'll uh, consider one special case equal with subintervals. Now, uh, when once uh, subintervals are chosen along with equal length, so delta x equal b over a over n, n equal subintervals, the Riemann sums have the form. Now, this sum, uh, Sn equal now sigma k to the 1 to n, and a function value for each subinterval, and that is now bottom length, but these are all the way the same, and along with uh, uh, f of ck height for each sub-interval uh, rectangle. Now, among this one, let's try to get, again, a uh, special case. Once ck is chosen from right end point, then, now, here, this summation uh, can be written this way and limit is now there on. Here, let's see the picture here now. Okay, from A to B, we have uh, equal uh, n sub intervals, and we are choosing CK from uh, the right end point. So this is a first sub interval, and this one will be C1 which is same as a plus delta x. And there's a c2, there's a plus 2 delta x, so that if this is kth one, kth subinterval, then there's a ck, there's a, a plus k times delta x. So that is exactly, now ck is same as a times k delta x. But anyway, ck becomes x, Delta x becomes dx. Okay, now let's try to solve this example. And here, the uh, definite integral expression is not union. Uh, so we'll try to do it with uh, two different um, low bound and upper bound. Anyway, here we have uh, 2 over n. So it looks like... Um, that is now the, the same delta x. That means if you are using n subinterval, then originally the interval length is 2. So the first case is that we are choosing the interval from 0 to 2. Okay, then here now, if you are making uh, the equal subintervals, n equal subintervals, then here the first point will be uh, now delta x, which is uh, 2 over n. That is a c1. Now c2 will be twice over that, c3 will be th three times over that, and so on, so that here for the case subinterval, ck will be now, here, k times 2 over n. ck is k times 2 over n, which means that is now ck. That is, again, ck. So that the given limit is same as integral. We start with uh, low bound 0 and upper bound 2. And then here now, and this term is 3 plus ck so that 
3 plus x and squared plus 4 and that is now 3 plus ck which must be x in this integral and here that is delta x must be changed into uh, dx that's the definite integral now because 3 is added let's try one more with a little bit different interval here start with uh, 3 and now that is 5 so the interval length is 2 so yet we have uh, uh, delta x is 2 over n now for this case if you make a partition n equal uh, sub-intervals, then the first one is now right end point for the first sub-interval. That is now C1, which is same as 3 plus delta x as 2 over n. Now, second sub-interval, third sub-interval, so that there is now case sub-interval, and right end point, that is now CK, then the same as 3 plus k times here 2 over n. So uh, along with this choice of uh, the a and b, now this whole thing is ck. That is again ck. So the given limit, capital G, uh, represents uh, the given term, is same as integral. Now in integral is from 3 to 5, and ck is given in this way so that the integral must be now x squared, that is whole thing ck squared, and 4 times ck, so that here you have 4x, right? And again, same way this is delta x, so that you are putting here dx. So uh, expression, definite integral uh, expression is not unique. However, if you get um, the value, evaluate this integral, then these two must be the same. But anyway, it can be, uh, the sum can be expressed uh, uh, more than one. In fact, you can choose um, quite uh, different intervals so that eventually if you want, then arbitrarily many uh, different um, definitive can be made. Okay. Okay, that is end of the first part. Thank you.